Hey YouTube, another video and uh, this time part 2 in the Z80 build. Part 1 was made about uh, a year ago and as I mentioned in my last update I sort of uh, got stuck um, for, for different reasons at that point. But I'm continuing it now and uh, better late than never. So um, welcome to part 2 which uh, deals with, uh, with the memories in our build. And uh, the memories are um, the next most important part aside from the CPU. Obviously the CPU itself is, uh, is the most important part in the circuit. That, that's actually what makes the computer. But uh, without the memories we won't have uh, any code, any instructions that we can direct the CPU to carry out. So um, they are the next most important part and basically uh, the combination of a CPU and um, at least a single memory um, that would make a sort of minimum uh, minimum setup to get the CPU to run and to carry out different instructions and also be able to get uh, different results in uh, simple outputs uh, just like you see here with, uh, with LEDs and uh, not yet going to the part of having a display and everything. But um, anyway, um, what I did in this example, in this example I'm going to show you how the memories function, how um, uh, the CPU would, uh, would decide which memory it, uh, it needs to use, and also some, uh, some other basic information. And uh, what I did is I took the original design if you don't, uh, if you didn't watch part one, then just go to the description of this video, and you will find there a link to part one, which explains sort of uh, gives you all the general information about this project and about this design. And uh, the I didn't design this uh, this build. I'm just using somebody else's uh, design, which I re reviewed, and um, it looks very solid. Um, you can find the schematics in there and um, what I did was I've isolated again the ROM and the RAM memory from that design from those schematics so that I can explain to you uh, exactly how those two components work together with the CPU just like I did uh, for the CPU itself in part one. So um, as always let's um, start first of all by um, having a look at what we have here on the breadboard we have um, two memories uh, right here. They are both uh, 256,000 bits and uh, they are divided um, to make uh, 32,000 um, plus uh, words of uh, each word 8, bit, 8 bits long. So we basically have 32,000 plus cells and each cell can hold uh, an 8-bit value, an 8-bit instruction, which uh, those instructions will either are just values in the memories that we need to add or do something, or they will be actual instructions that tell the CPU which sort of command it needs to execute and what does it need to do next. Um, the next, uh, these two memories, uh, by the way, they are the same. They are both static RAM memories, although uh, you can treat, uh, we will treat this one as the raw memory and this one as the RAM memory, just because I didn't want to write anything to like a permanent uh, EPROM and uh, just to waste it. And um, also for writing it, you need to have a programmer and we're going to see that shortly. But um, these are two of the same memories. ROM and RAM memories, uh, in general, they work sort of the same. Um, they can hold the same values, the same instructions, they can do everything the same, only that the ROM memory is read-only, and the RAM memory is sort of like loose storage space that allows us to put in our own values, save our own values into the system. But uh, once we power off the system, then the RAM memory will be erased. Uh, the ROM memory, however, it holds all the initial uh, commands and values that we've set into it. And it basically uh, is responsible 
that once we turn on the computer there is some sort of basic program there that can initialize everything and then move the handling to a loader that will load the program into the RAM or do whatever. So um, those are the two memories. Again, two static ROMs, but a uh, RAMs, but one is a ROM acts as a ROM memory, one acts as a RAM memory. Next, uh, you can see that here I have a, a address bus configuration. Both of the memories they are connected to the address bus. Here we have a data bus setup and again both memories will be connected to the data bus so that we can uh, pull out and put values um, inside of them. Um, here you can see I have a set of dip uh, switches right here and right here. These ones allow me to place to manually place values on the address bus so that we can address different parts of the memory and uh, these ones allow me to manually place values on the data bus so that we can just place values, store them or just read the values uh, from, the, from the memories themselves. Um, I made uh, two videos in the past explaining how to read and write um, from memories, from these RAM memories, RAM, ROM. And um, in those videos, the first part dealt with just 16 bits of memory. So basically here we can see 16 bits of memory, that's it. Um, the second part dealt with uh, 16 words, uh, each word made out of 4 bits, so we have 16 uh, locations and each location can hold 4 uh, bit instructions. And in this case we're dealing with memories that have 256,000 bits and they are 32,000 plus uh, words, which uh, each word can hold 8 8 bit values so these are much larger but they work um, almost exactly the same well not almost but exactly the same uh, just like in the previous videos I'm not going to go too much into it but uh, we have the addresses that we address different cells we have the data that uh, we either uh, place inside the memory or we read from the memory and we have uh, three functions enabling the chip, enabling the outputs, and writing to them. Those are the three, the three functions right here. And they also represent in this example the, the functions that would come out of the CPU. So uh, the CPU will have a memory request uh, flag and it will have a read and a write and by uh, working these the CPU can uh, either read the memory or write to it or know if some other device is using the address bus so that it disables the outputs of the memories um, or enabling the outputs uh, so that it can fetch the values into the CPU. Um, so um, we've covered that part Right here, there are there is a small circuit, um, a logic circuit. Uh, there is a uh, an inverter. I'm using one inverter. By the way, just like the original schematics, I'm going to put a picture uh, in this section here of the video to show you which part was isolated from the circuit. So it sort of holds to the original design, except for changes that I had to make here. Not changes, but additions to get this to work uh, as a sort of standalone example. So here, in any case, we have a, a small circuit. It's a one inverter and a two OR gates. And uh, what they will do is they will uh, dictate which memory is being uh, read from or written from in this case, although in the, in, in, in the original design there is a ROM and a RAM. Here I just used two RAMs and I've connected both of them to the read uh, input just so that we can see and we can play around with it and see how we move from one memory to another. Um, this uh, part is related to something that is called memory mapping and uh, I'm going to mention this uh, in a few moments. 
you can see that um, I've added outputs the the address bus so that we can see the values that's sitting on it we can see the values that are sitting on the data bus from here starts uh, D0 so data 0 from here to data 7 so the 8 bits they will go in this direction and here we have address uh, 0 and address 15 and they will go in that direction this is just a voltage regulator and this part here uh, is not really directly related to this example but it's a sort of programmer that I've made just so that I can show you how these memories are being programmed and um, how we can uh, how we can put uh, different pieces of code on them so that um, Without a programmer, I'm just just explaining this uh, this uh, part right here. So, going to the example itself. Now that you understand everything that goes on, you will see here that we have LEDs on on each one of the memories, so that we know which one is being used. And we also have them here, so that we know which function we're using. And it's just like the standard examples that uh, that I made so far. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it on, and um, <clears throat> right now it is on. And at this point, um, I should mention that since this corresponds to the original design that that is uh, shown in the schematic, these two LEDs right here they are inverted. So that means that the LED that is off that is the memory that we are addressing to, and the LED that is on. Uh, that is the memory that uh, its outputs are disabled. Um, it won't provide any outputs uh, on the on the data bus, and uh, it also won't read any inputs from the address bus. Also here, um, we have these ones also inverted, and that's also again because of the way that the Z80 CPU works. So, for example when um, the Z80 CPU will give a high value on the memory request then both memories will be disabled and none of the outputs will be enabled so that means that maybe we're communicating with some input output device maybe we're getting something from the system bus but in any case both memories are disabled and the instructions to the CPU will come on the data bus from somewhere else, maybe the keyboard, maybe the uh, the the communications from somewhere that is not uh, not coming from the memories. Once we release it to low, then we're dealing either with one of these. And here we have just the write and the read. And again, when they're high, they're disabled. When they are low, then we are performing uh, this action. So. Skipping on ahead to just showing you an example, reading and writing uh, memories just like in the uh, first uh, videos that I made dealing with the smaller sized memories. I'm not going to do it uh, too much, but uh, just to show you. So for example, right now we're sitting on address 0 on the, on the address bus. I can uh, increase the, the addresses and I will try to do it blindly as much as I can without shortening everything here. But uh, right now we're sitting on address 1 on the address bus. So we are addressing cell number 1 in the ROM memory. And if we read it, then we get these sort of random values. And if you watch the first uh, videos dealing with reading and writing to RAM memories, then once we power on a system, uh, RAM memories will always go into a random state all the cells inside will just receive a random value so right now I can read address 1 and I have this random value here that was just placed when I powered it on if uh, since I have all those on the data bus as you can see here if I do a write command right now I'm writing it you can see that it it went off I've released it uh, the write command uh, was uh, carried out and if I read it now, then we don't have any values. I can place manually a value on the data bus. For example, let's place value number 3 on the data bus. I will write it 
then I will lower the data bus and then I can read it and I have the value 3 that sits on address number 1 inside what we've defined as the raw memory. Now um, that's basically uh, just like I showed in the previous videos how we read and write into them. If I press the memory request and I re try to read from the memory, you see that nothing happens because again we disable them and at this state then we're uh, waiting for data to come from some other device which is not the memory but uh, if this is released and the memory request uh, is in a low state which is the active state and we read it then we get the value that we've placed uh, inside of it um, the next thing that um, that we need to discuss in relation to the to the Z80 computer uh, build is how would the CPU uh, know whether it needs to read from the raw memory or whether it needs to read from the RAM memory? Um, it does it obviously through code. It will receive an instruction that will tell it, uh, okay, now you need to go into this address inside the RAM memory and continue from there and once that piece of code in the RAM memory uh, has finished then it will have an instruction that tell it, tells it okay uh, the program has finished here go back to the RAM memory and continue your work from there but how does it do, does it do it hardware wise uh, in this case comes in something that is called address mapping memory mapping and uh, this little circuit here is responsible for it. Um, if you look uh, in the original uh, creator's project, he made a very extensive manual on, on his build. He gives you there all the addresses, all the fixed addresses for memory uh, mapping, for input-output um, uh, devices that it needs to communicate with. Then in there you will see that he has divided the the two um, the two memories um, he, he sort of partitioned them let's let's call it like that and basically here we have 16 bits that uh, that will refer to an address here but uh, these two memories they only uh, they can only hold uh, uh, 32 plus thousand uh, words so the the 16th uh, bit we're not using it the 16 bit bit already goes into higher uh, values so these memories will not be uh, using it they only have addresses from 0 to 14 so 15 uh, bits for addressing but uh, uh, how would the CPU do it uh, through hardware so if we have let's say um, a piece of code here and the code will tell the CPU um, right now I want you to go to address to an address that is higher than uh, 8000 hexadecimal then the CPU will raise the address bus since it's higher than uh, than 8000 that means that the, the 16th uh, bit will also go high and if I raise the 16th bit, bit right now, we can see that the LED has switched. Right now we have disabled the RAM memory and we're only um, reading, from, uh, reading or writing from the RAM memory. So that means that all the addresses from 0 to 8000 will refer to the RAM memory. And all addresses from 8000 to uh, FFFF uh, will refer to the RAM memory. And that's how uh, memory mapping works. So if we will sort of look at it as a whole and say that we have 64, 65 uh, plus memory addresses to work with, we've basically partitioned them and uh, by calling all addresses let's say if we call um, if we lower it and we will call the, the this this address here which I can't give you right the number off my head but if we call this address 
then we're still still dealing with um, with the raw memory and that includes all addresses that will follow it until the point where we raise uh, another bit and then we're moving on to the RAM memory and all addresses from 8000 and higher will always refer to the RAM memory and uh, just to give you an example if I uh, if I lower this so you remember that uh, in the original um, in the RAM memory in cell 1 we've put the value 3 so in the RAM memory I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the value uh, 4 here we have the value 4 I'm gonna write this value and then I'm gonna lower it and if I read the value then I have 4 and if I go back to address number 1 that sits in the in the in the raw memory and we will read it then we have still the value 3 so in the raw memory at address 1 we have the value 3 and in the RAM memory at address 1 we have the value 4 and that's how uh, the CPU will know which memory it needs to talk to and that obviously all, um, all happens through code instructions it will receive an instruction that tells it okay from now on you're uh, jumping to this address and you're starting to read it from there and it will read everything from the RAM so um, that was um, a sort of a, a explanation on how these two memories will work in uh, in uh, in, uh, the, in the design uh, of the Z80 build. Um, let's talk a bit about this little thing here. I've made this example. I had it finished uh, at the beginning of the week, but then I thought, well, since I've made it, why not show? how a programmer, for example, a programmer, as in the, the device itself, would go about uh, programming these chips. So let me just uh, lower this one. I'm going to lower everything back to zero. And um, I'm going to connect. Uh, I have a piece of code on this Arduino. The code will basically do what we're doing manually. So it will just place an address on the address bus it will place data on the data bus and then it will write it to the memory and it will do that for every address it will just go on um, just to explain here the circuitry it's not really that complex we have the Arduino here which holds the code we have three uh, shift registers and um, one of them will hold the byte for the data bus and two of them uh, each one will hold the byte one for the lower um, uh, address uh, values and one for the higher address values and if I connect it so what I'm doing now I'm connecting the right pin so that it can give a right instruction uh, to the to the memory and now I'm powering it on and we will just see it uh, going through the addresses and it for the data, I just made a loop that counts uh, from 0 to 255 and then it resets and in each, each cell it will put the corresponding uh, value into it. So I will connect it now and you can see how it goes through all the cells and it's basically programming them, just placing values in them and if I disconnect it and I will also disconnect the write function. Right now, um, we've only programmed the, the, the raw memory, what we defined as a raw memory. We could also do that for the RAM memory, but there's no point for it. But in any case, right now, if I go to, I have address zero. If I read it, then I have a zero. And if I go um, to address one, and I read it then I have a 1 and if I go to this address which I don't know by heart then it didn't reach it yet so we have just a random value inside but uh, let's go to here we have address number 5 we have a 5 in there and uh, then we have address number 15 and we have a 15 inside sorry 14 and uh, that's it. That's that's basically what the programmer will do. The programmer, again, as an uh, as the device that programs uh, these uh, these chips, 
that will just go through the whole uh, series of addresses and uh, place values and then write it and that's about it. So um, this was the example on um, on how the ROM and the RAM memory will work uh, in the Z80 build that I'm making and again if you're not if you don't know what I'm talking about this project go to the description you'll have all the information there you also have a link to the first video and the link to the original uh, website of the creator of this sort of design that I'm uh, that I'm working on my main goal is just to take that design split it into small parts making an example a demonstration explaining exactly how everything will work and then slowly putting it together so that we can all follow it together and learning from it uh, which is which is the, the best part of it all um, aside from that I thought um, also maybe I will talk a little bit about the code that will sit inside the memory itself maybe at this point some of you are wondering what does this code look like how, how does it work how does it tell the, the CPU um, what to do and the code is basically the, the most one of the important things uh, because without it there is nothing there's just a bunch of chips here and they won't do anything so I've made this table and uh, you can see it right here let's see if we are focused yeah we're focused and um, I've made a, um, a series of assembly commands for the for the Z80 and this is what they would look like uh, inside the inside the memory itself and uh, you can see that uh, assembly is basically a translation of a, of a machine code and if you want to learn more about these uh, machine codes then uh, <coughs> sorry then uh, go to the user manual of the Z80 CPU and over there it explains uh, all the possible code and um, operations that you can do with the processor and which um, which code and values um, the memory will basically hold and I've demonstrated this in the part one video for the Z80 uh, build uh, dealing with the CPU itself so go back there and see it and if not just google uh, Z80 CPU or Zilog CPU um, user guide and uh, it's a very extensive user guide it will have all the information that you can possibly want in order to get that CPU to work in minimum configuration or uh, even in maximum configuration but it has all the information that you need in order to work with it but uh, this is what it will look like inside the memory so we have 8 bits and uh, each uh, 8 bits uh, each word of 8 bits sits in its own address some commands will require uh, two addresses other commands that only occur inside the CPU for example adding registers or uh, copying values from one register to another they will utilize only a single uh, a single command a single cell from the memory other commands that for example uh, we need to go into a 16-bit lo location like this jump command right here they will use three memory addresses and this is what it looks like so here for example we have a load we're loading the value 2 uh, into uh, register A which is an accumulator so the first line uh, which starts at address 0 that will be the command itself and uh, again to understand this command and why it's written like that you need to go to the user guide and to the reference but basically in this command um, this these three bits basically say a if we look at this one we have load the value 3 into b and if we look again at the first line we can see that it's it's exactly the same apart from these three bits so this one will be an A and these three bits will tell it that it's a B and it's all written in the user guide 
The next uh, line will be the value itself, so the value 2, which is uh, right here. So with these two lines, uh, the first line will be fed, the, the, C the CPU will um, get this uh, first command, it will know, okay, I'm dealing with a load and um, I need to load a value into register A, so it will carry out a memory fetch, the memory fetch um, uh, cycle will increase the PC register which is the address bus here and it will read the next value and then uh, it knows that it needs to put that value into register A and after these two lines this command has been executed and then again the address bus it goes uh, it increments one higher and it receives this command and again the CPU uh, gets the command and it knows okay this is a load command only this one this time I'm dealing with register B and I need to put this value into register B so um, again it will load the address bus it will carry out the memory fetch and it will load this value and place it into B and after these two lines then the command um, has been executed in this case here for example we have a load and uh, we're loading uh, the value that sits inside register A and we are saving the value we're not we're loading it into the memory but we're saving the value that is in register A in the memory address that is referred to by um, the 16-bit register HL which you can see we've loaded values uh, here into the H and into the L each one holds 8 bits just like we did here but this command will tell it uh, just to write down the value that is in A inside memory address that is in uh, the register HL so this is basically what it looks like inside the memory These, this is how the, uh, the commands are uh, executed and here at the end we can see we just reach no operation and the computer will just keep on cycling uh, just like you saw in the first video that's uh, that's about it um, oh by the way uh, another thing is that uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video if this is the right take and I remember correctly here you can see a jump uh, uh, command uh, we're jumping to an address that is basically higher than 8000 so once this command has been executed the CPU will no longer be dealing with this uh, section but it will be now communicating with the RAM memory and wherever uh, this uh, sits in the RAM memory then over there there needs to be a command that keeps on handling the CPU giving it the right instructions and once that has been executed uh, all the instructions have been carried out and maybe the program has reached the end we will need to have a, um, an instruction in the RAM memory that tells the CPU okay we're done here uh, we will have the same sort of uh, instruction only that it tells it to go back to address 0, 0, 0, D and the CPU will carry it out and then it will be communicating with the ROM again and it will continue from this point and it will go onwards. So that was it, that was uh, my, uh, my explanation on the dealing with the memories in this build. Uh, I hope you liked it and I hope that uh, it cleared some things uh, up and uh, at this, uh, the next stage would be to basically connect the CPU to this uh, setup and uh, running some commands and seeing some outputs and see how, seeing how everything uh, behaves and then moving on to input output and um, we still have a, a quite some uh, way to go but uh, that's it. I hope you liked it and uh, if you like my videos, you like my material, please consider subscribing. That's it. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.